I have been given the assignment to minister today. So uh, join me in the second letter uh, that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, when you get there, go to verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. When you got it, say word up. And if by chance you didn't bring your, your paper Bible, and uh, your Wi-Fi a little slow right now. Just, just lean over to your neighbor and say, let me share the word. Let me share the word. Just, just a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, starting at the 16th verse. But when one turns to the Lord, this is already good, <laughs> the veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, yes, sir, there is freedom. I know somebody already shouting in their spirit. Hallelujah. But there's more good news. Verse 18 says, and we all, because see, this promise is not just for a select few people. This ain't just for the VIP section. This is for, this for everybody. And we all with unveiled faces beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Now we thought we were done with the Imago Day series last week, but the Lord uh, said, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're going to do it one more time. Amen. And we're going to go into our sixth installment of the Imago Day series, but I need you to join me and say one word. Y'all ready for that one word? That one word is glory. Okay, maybe you didn't hear the word I said. When I count down from three, I need you to say this word. And when you say it, I need you to say it like you believe you got glory over your whole life. One, two, three. It's getting better. It's getting, I, listen, now the next time you say glory, I need you to say glory like the glory of the God is getting ready to cover your family, your children, your finances, and everything that's connected to you. Three, two, one. Can I go one more time, Doc? Now this next time you say glory, I need you to say glory like it's getting ready to, to cancel every curse in your bloodline. And your children's children, children gonna be blessed. You send in miracles to the third and fourth generation. And there will be no curses after this. Three, two, one. I feel glory in the room. Check your road. Make sure there's glory on your road. I need your courage and neighbor. Tell them you sat on the right road this morning. There's glory on my road. There's glory in this section. There's glory in my life. I got, I got a few people that said I'm excited about the word already. Because I got glory on my life. Is there anybody beside me that says, I thank the word, I thank the Lord for the confirming word that I got glory. I know some people put a word curse on me, but they can't break the glory. I know some people tried to call you something else, but you got glory on your life. Just speak over, high five your neighbor, tell them you got glory. You got glory. Yeah, we got to go to the word, but you got glory. Pastor Grace, you got glory. This is why the haters' word keep bouncing off of you, because you got glory. This is why you can take a licking and keep on ticking, because you got glory. This is why you're still living with that disease, because you got glory. This is why you ain't killed yourself yet, because you got glory. I wish I had a real believer just shout, glory! Sit down so we can do some work. I don't care what you say, I got glory on my life. I don't care what you think about it, I got glory on my life. You may not like me, but I...
Now, in order, thank you, God. In order for us to walk away with a clear understanding, I got to give you some things, and I got to let you know that there, there is a difference between fake glory and real glory. Yeah, you know, I got to rightly divide the word of truth. You know, Ronnie Goins is my teacher, so I can't be up here playing with the scripture. I got to rightly divide it. There is, there is a difference between fake glory and real glory. Real glory is the manifest presence of God. It is the very, very essence of God that is manifested to mankind. But sadly, throughout history, mankind has had a twisted love affair with fake glory. It's, it's the truth. I got to state my case. We, we, can, we, can, we can start in Genesis. And, and in Genesis, you see, in chapter 2, in the Garden of Eden, uh, Eve becomes so enamored by the knowledge that God did not give her that she allowed herself to be seduced by the serpent. And her beloved husband willingly followed her. It's a problem already. Uh, followed her into a most inglorious situation. But have you ever asked yourself, when you, when you think about this, this, this part of the creation narrative, have you ever asked yourself, how did Adam and Eve become naked and ashamed? Because when we read the text, we don't see God ever putting any clothes on them. We don't see... Uh, uh, anywhere in the text that God made a divine robe for them. He didn't tell the angels put a robe on them. No, no. But when, when they decided to eat of the fruit, when they decided to engage in this fake glory, they lost the real glory. Can I suggest and submit to you that the very thing that was covering Adam and Eve before the fall was not robes, it was literally the glory of God. The Bible says that the whole earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah said he had a robe of glory on and the train filled the temple. So, so the glory of the Lord can be a clothing of sorts, can be a covering of sorts. And when Adam and Eve decided to go contrary to the will of God, they forfeited their glory for nakedness. They were uncovered because the glory of the Lord was gone off their life. But if you fast forward to, to Genesis chapter 11 in this post-flood community, you see even there, they decide in Genesis chapter 11, we are going to make a name and a city for ourselves. This is what they said in the city of Babel. They said, listen, we, we are going to, to make a name for ourselves and we are going to make a tower that reaches heaven. And the Bible says, even God says, that they were going to be successful. But there was one problem. They weren't doing it for God's glory. They were doing it for their own glory. Somebody, somebody felt me right there. They would have been successful. But they didn't do it for the glory of God. They did it for the glory of man. Could it be that your business plan keeps failing? Could it be that relationship after relationship ends up in brokenness because you're doing it not for the glory of God, but for the glory of you? I ain't in nobody's business. I ain't trying to go in nobody's driveway. I got enough problems of my own. But I want to submit to you that sometimes we miss the mark of God. We miss the things of God simply because we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Pray all you want to. Fast all you want to. Put it on your vision board and, and let your prayer partners agree with you. But if you're not doing it for the glory of God, it will not prosper. I'm not trying to be a doom and groom prophet. I'm just telling you that if you're going to do it, it got to be for the glory and honor of God. But then go on over to the book of Exodus. When you get to Exodus, you see Moses, the great liberator of Israel, in the midst of ushering the people of God into the promised land, their illicit affair 
with knockoff glory rears its ugly head again. Not again, y'all. Not again. Yeah, yes, again. The Bible says that as Moses is up on Mount Sinai, conversing with God, seeking him for instruction, seeking him for law, seeking him for order. He is literally meeting with God. The Bible says that the children of Israel down below the mountain in the valley says, Moses taking too long. Mm -mm. He been up there too long. I ain't got, mm -mm, no, I, 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 need, I need something right now. I need something I can touch. I need something I can see for myself. And the Bible says they got impatient with God and they began to, to go to Aaron and said, Moses is gone too long. We want a God that we can see. It's in the text. It's in the Bible. The Bible, the, the, the Bible says that, that Aaron responded to him and said, well, give me your gold and we'll make an image. The Bible says that they created an image of a golden calf. Most theologians agree that this calf was made in the image of Apis, A-P-I-S, which was a god that, th that the Egyptians worshipped back in Egypt. In other words, a god of their past. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a god in uh, the gods beyond the river. Come on, where, where, where are my MOJs at? It, it was a god of their past. So, so they said, instead of waiting on God to give me a bright hope for my future, because I'm in a waiting season, uh, I've got impatient uh, and I'll start serving the gods I used to serve before God delivered me. I know this ain't nobody else's testimony, but has anybody ever been impatient and scrolled back through their DMs to find an old man? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You ever been impatient and went back in your contacts? Like, wait a minute, I wonder if Sheila still. Hello, can I speak to Sheila, please? Just look straight ahead, sisters. Look straight ahead, women of God, because you know you didn't call Brian like Brian. Hey, B, how you doing? It's been a long time. You know, I, I seen you on IG, whatever, with your little family and everything. I'm just, you, know, you got space for a friend. But before we get mad at them, you got to understand that we do the same thing sometimes, because sometimes we want our God black or white. Sometimes we want our God to be homosexual or have gender fluidity. Sometimes we want our God to be a Democrat or a Republican. Some, sometimes we want our God to be pro-life or pro-choice. We, we want our God to be a capitalist or a socialist. We, we want our God to be on our side even when we're clearly wrong. We, we want our God to turn his head when we're doing wrong, but then turn back to us when we're fed up with ourselves. Yes, we definitely want God to be the way we... Don't you get mad at them Israelites like I would never. <laughs> the Bible says that, the, that, the, that, that, that as Moses descends down from the mountain, he got the law in his hand, fresh off this, that new, new. <laughs> Straight from God. Was, could you imagine? He got the new, new. And the glory of God is so exclusive in that time. The glory of God is, it, 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 it ain't on the people, it ain't on the, the priest not even rocking the glory. <laughs> and so before Mount, Moses leaves the mountain, he says, God, I got one more thing, please. I thank you for your word, but I got one more thing, please, please, please. I heard about it. I heard about it, but I need, can you please show me your glory? Please show me. I think I, I just need to see it. I just, is there anybody beside me that says, God, I didn't seen a lot of nice things. I didn't been a lot of nice places. I'd have been able to travel to a few countries, God. But all I want to see really is your glory manifested on my, show me your glory. God says, all right, Mo, I got you. I'm going to put you between this cliff and this rock. And I'm going to pass by you and you're going to experience my glory. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord shone around about him so much that it changed his very image. 
I got to pause right here because when you've been in the glory of God, people ought to know it. You ought to look different. You ought to walk different. You ought to talk different. The old church said it like this. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. Places I used to go. Why? Because I've experienced the glory of God. And so once the glory of God is revealed to Moses, something amazing happens. Watch this. God transferred to Moses his glory, which changed his complete continence. And he looks like he's been in the glory of God. And when he comes down the mountain, in my estimation, when, when Moses comes down the mountain to the Israelites, they should have been praising God because they seen the glory of God on him. Amen. But instead of praising God for the glory, they say, hold on, Moses. We don't like how you look. You too bright, sir. You messing up all our orgies and fun. You messing up all, you, you, you too bright. We got to take you off the text thread because you always talking about the script. Uh, you, 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 you're not invited to the bachelorette party because you're going to be in here. Uh, 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 uh. You, you're not invited to the kickback. You're not invited to. And they put a veil over Moses because they didn't want to deal with the glory that was on his life. Some of you ought to thank God that you've been unfriended. Some of you ought to thank God that you've been uninvited because the truth of the matter is uh, the, some folk in your life can't handle the glory. Huh? And if you can't handle the glory, I don't need to be in this story. I, I, I need somebody to hear me. You want people in your life that can handle the glory of God that's upon your life. And the Bible says that they put a veil on Moses. They should have been leaning into the glory of God, but because they didn't want to change their life, they stifled the glory. And I ask you, how have you stifled the glory of God? I ain't going to hang there, but I, I, I need you to kind of ponder this. How, how in your life have you veiled the glory of God? You know the truth, but you'd rather be comfortable in the lie. You know this ain't real, but you so comfortable with the illusion. You know they about to get up and go back to their real life and their real family, but as we slept, <laughs> night away, as we lay. Yeah, you, you gotta. So they veil the glory and this leads us to our text of focus as Paul approaches the reformed Israelites that live in Corinth he has to address the lingering entanglement that they have with fake glory and he classifies it as a veil in essence, this is the same veil that they put on Moses to shield themselves from the glory of God. And this same veil is now being put over their hearts so that they will not experience the true glory of God. They put it over their hearts so they won't feel conviction. They put it over their hearts so that they can get a good dance and a good shout, but they ain't got to change nothing at the house. They put the veil over their hearts so that they can cry out at the altar and then. Paul says, ah, believers at Corinth, I got good news for you. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. Somebody ought to thank God for a turning. But I got to be clear with you. This is not a 360 turn. This is a 180 turn. Because many of us are familiar with folk who do, who do 360 turns. You come to the Lord, I give myself away. Right? 
And then you start coming to church and you, and you get baptized and, 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 and you go to KE. Now you're not bootleg no more. Praise the Lord. Then, 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 you, then, then you get in a class and you go to next and you get in KU and you worshiping. And then, then don't, don't let you go through WDC. Oh, my gosh. Listen, you're going you to be saved. And then not now, now you, you almost lifted up in pride because now you, you, you're like, I, I know the Lord and I, I, I know the principles. And, I, and I, I fasted for seven days. Come on. Then you start getting prideful. Then you start getting delusional. And then you don't want to hear nobody tell you the truth. And you don't want to be held accountable. And you don't want nobody to tell you that you've fallen from where you first started. And now you're back in the club. And now you're back doing the things you once did before you donned the door of Cornelia Christian Church. And you made a 360. Paul asked the church, he said, what stopped you from, what hindered you? You were running so well. You were doing so good. But the Bible says, when Paul says turn, he says, no, I need you to do a 180, which means I ain't coming back. I'm not going back to the things. I can't see y'all, and that's all right, because y'all represent the past. I don't want the past. I don't want the old life. I'm trying to, is there anybody behind this? me that can say I'm not turning back I got a 180 in my spirit and the world behind me the cross before me no turning back he says listen I need you to hear me he says when when when, when I when I get here he says you will engage in true repentance and you will see a miracle because what takes place next is so miraculous. Paul states that where the spirit of the Lord is, it will be freedom. And this freedom is a pervasive key. Hear me. It is unlocking every door where sin and shame has tried to hide themselves in your life. Listen to me. When you get free, free. Mm. everything that once held you bound when the glory of God starts coming doors start unlocking you'll find yourself crying I can't believe what happened to me at 6 yeah go process it because now God is opening the doors God is bringing freedom now you ain't got to do it now it's a choice before you got saved you had to after the cross you want to I'm just going to and if that weren't enough he ends this statement with a profound promise. He says to the people, he says, the Lord, not man, he says, the Lord will reveal his glory to us and transform us one degree at a time into his own image. Ah. Some of y'all didn't shout because y'all don't know what that means. <laughs> and that's okay because I got your back. I'm here for you. When he says, I'm going to transform you into my image through my glory one degree at a time, the Holy Spirit, as I was preparing this message, he said, son, don't you come down from that stage before you tell the people this powerful statement. And that is that every decision is a degree. I'm almost out of your way. I'm going to give you some time back. You can do your thing. But I need you to hear me when I say this. Let me lay on this for a minute. Every decision you make is a degree toward glory or a degree toward ingloriousness. You got to listen to me. Every time you say no to your flesh, that's another degree of glory. Every time you say no to your past, that's another degree of glory. Every time you serve instead of being lost, that's another degree of glory. Every time you, you sow instead of spin, that's another degree of glory. Is there anybody beside me that's thankful to God that they got to know in their spirit? I know how to tell hell no. I know how to tell my flesh no. I know how to tell my past no. Because I realize every decision huh, is a degree huh. that's why you can be saved at the same time baptized in the same water went to the same new believers class and one person is further along in their faith walk than another because somebody had to make a decision is there anybody beside me that says in 2024, I'm about to make some quality decisions. I'm about to make some decisions that get me deeper into the glory of God. 
I come to free somebody today. You got a choice whether you go back or not. You got a choice whether you live that life or not. I need you to heal me in the spirit. Every decision is a degree. You got to make up in your mind how much do I want the glory? Do I want the glory enough to turn down my plate? Do I want the glory enough to tell this person that I really know I could have a fun with? No. Do I want the glory enough not to go back to that illicit affair? Do I want the glory enough not to get into that, 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 that tax situation, you know, that, that'll flip me real quick and that'll give me all the bands I need to get? Do I really want the glory bad enough to tell my flesh no. I wish I had somebody who is in here says, I, I, I need a degree. I, I, I'm trying to get deeper in the glory. So I'm going to tell my flesh no. I'm going to tell my past no. All this stuff in my day, I'm telling it no. I need, I need some people that's going to be with me. I need you to be able to say out of your mouth, I'm moving. Every degree, every decision is a degree. I'm moving. Let that sit for a second. Every decision is a degree. Now, here's my question. Which way are you going? Are you going toward the glory of God? Or are you going toward the flesh? Hmm. Every degree, every decision, rather, is a degree. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. You're so kind. He's a pastor and an armor bearer. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but here's the deal. I, I, I got to leave you, but I need you to understand that we're coming away from the fake glory. We're going into the genuine glory of God. But in order for us to go into the genuine glory of God, we got to make some decisions. I, I love how Isaiah says it. I, I, Isaiah says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the train of his glory filled the temple it filled the temple so much to where where, where, where he, 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 he couldn't barely see because the glory of the Lord was there and uh, Isaiah would suggest that the glory is not something that's just there but the glory is something we put on so I, I called my pastor I said pastor I need I, 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 I need your coat I, I really, no, seriously, I, I need your coat. I need your coat. I know, I, 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 I know you're not God, but you're the man of God. You're the man of God. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your coat and, and, and I'm going to put it on. Because I got to illustrate this to you, but you got to see this. Now, here's the thing. Now, I know some of y'all fashionistas looking like, uh-uh, that don't even match. <laughs> it's a whole different color scheme. Don't worry about that. Because when the glory of God is on your life, it don't matter what's underneath because the glory about to cover it. You can't see my molestation. You can't see my abuse. You, watch this. You, you, you can't see the rape that I've gone through. You can't see that past abortion. You, you, oh, you, 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 you can't see that abortion. You can't see that bankruptcy. All you see is the glory of God. You wouldn't even sit next to me if you seen what the glory was covering. You wouldn't even want to be in my friend group. You wouldn't want to be my prayer partner if you knew what was underneath the glory. But thanks be to God. Somebody ought to thank him for the glory. Somebody ought to thank him that he covered you. Huh? He covered your sin. Huh? He covered your sickness. Huh? He covered your frailty. Huh? He covered your failure. Somebody just shout, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Covered with the glory. I'm almost out your way. I'm covered with the glory. But because I'm covered with the glory, watch this. You can't even judge me by my past because you can't see it. I wish I had somebody that could give God glory right here because your past been covered. You used to be on the but it don't matter no more you used to be somewhere else but it don't matter no more because I'm in the house of God now it don't matter what house I was in before this because I'm covered with the glory but see I asked I asked for his coat in particular because I know he got stuff in his coat 
Yo, yo, let me, give me, just give me a few more minutes. I'm, I'm out your way. He got stuff in his coat. I, I, I know, I know this man, this man, this man got stuff in his coat. And, 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 and I know one of the things he got in his coat is an ID. And if I got the coat, then that means I got his ID. I know you saying, but that ain't your face. It don't matter, cause I'm being conformed. I'm being transformed into the image of the Father. I know you say, but that ain't your name, that's okay. Because I got a new name over in glory. I know you said, wait a minute. That ain't your address, but I'm I mad at it because he said, "Behold, I go and prepare a place for you." So if you need identity, just tell your neighbor the glory will give you identity. The glory will change your image. The glory will change your name. The glory will change your location. So thank you for your ID, sir. I'm going to hold on to that. But I got to keep digging in the pockets. Because I know he's a man of means. So there's more stuff. But as I dig, I find some keys. Oh, these some nice keys. Them, them keys that you can start the car without turning it on. Them, them keys, you just got to have proximity. Man, that's, oh, there's some keys. That, that's for a nice place. That's for a place with, 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 with acreage, with square footage. And I know y'all saying you don't live there. That ain't your house. Your name ain't on the deed. It don't matter if my name ain't on the deed. As long as I got the keys, I got access. Tell your neighbor if you want access, you got to get in the glory. You got to get in the glory. The glory will give you access to things you couldn't afford. Oh, y'all need Bible. He says, I'll let you live in houses that you didn't build. And I'll give you land that you didn't buy. Somebody shout access. Oh, that ain't, that's good. Got something to drive and I got somewhere to live. But that ain't enough. See, that's why some of y'all ain't got it yet. Because the Bible says you have not because you ask. I want most stuff. I don't know about anybody else, but I want everything the glory will afford me. So as I keep digging in the pockets, oh, there's a card. This is a card. This that heavy card. This that card that make noise. This that card that ain't got no limit on it. It ain't got my name on it. But since I got it, I'm an authorized user. And since I'm an authorized user, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Somebody shout glory. How you buy that? You ain't got a good credit store. Because I got resource. How you living there? And you can't afford it. Because I got resource. I got the glory on my life. Is there anybody in here that says I thank God for the glory? Because I'm a live different. Because I'm covered with the glory. I'm a talk different. Because I'm covered in the glory. I'm a walk different. Because I'm covered in the glory. I wish somebody would just get the glory. Just put your coat on. You may not have this coat. Because this is my glory. But I need you to put on a coat in the spirit. And just tell your neighbor. I know it don't match. But it's going to take me higher. It may be too big for me, but I'm a grow in the glory of the Lord. It ain't my size yet, but every decision is another degree of the glory. I know you may look like I'm too short now, but if I stay in the glory, I'm going to get taller. If I stay in the glory, I'm going to get stronger. If I stay in the glory, I'm going to fill in all the spaces. Is there anybody in here? As I go to my seat that says, God, whatever you do, don't take your glory from me. I need the glory. I need the glory in my behavior. I need the glory in my attitude. I need the glory over my family. I need the glory in my marriage. I need the glory with my children. I 
need the glory in my job. I need the glory in my education. Somebody go have their children go through college debt free. And when they ask you, how did your child go to college debt free? Tell them one word, glory. When they see you and they know where you come from, but they don't know how you got there, give them one word, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Can I do this? Hallelujah. Not only did he give me his glory, but the old church said he walks with me. And he'll talk Talk with me. And he'll tell me me, I am his his own. own. (laughs) And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none of us. Not only will he give me his glory, but if I get scared, he'll protect me. He'll hold me. If I got the glory, you can't fight me. If I got the glory, he'll fight for me. Be still. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight you. You better say that, sir. Say it, sir. You better say I ain't got to fight you. I got glory. I ain't got to wrestle with you. I got glory. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. And just in case I got burdens, I can lay my burdens down at the feet of God. And he'll take my burdens and he'll give me more glory. He'll lay his hands on me and he'll encourage me and he'll help me and then he'll push me into my Cause I got glory. Glory. Glory in the morning. Glory in the evening. When I lay out glory, when I'm dreaming glory, what you dreaming about? I'm dreaming about glory. And when I get up, what got you up to glory? I got one more thing to tell you Even when this life is over I got a new home Over In Glory Even when I die He ain't finished blessing me I can lay my bed I can lay down And breathe my last But I ain't worried Cause when I wake up, I'ma wake up in glory. When I wake up, I'ma see bright glory in that great in the morning. Fare me well. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for another didactic, dynamic service at Cornelia Christian Church. Now, here's the deal. Now's the time where you can be a part of what we're doing here in Arlington, Texas. We're reaching the world, and your gifts can help us do that. The giving options are on the screen. Either three that make sense to you, that's what you do. But please, please, please download the app to keep up with things that we're doing here at your church. One more big piece of news. If you've never been here live, you gotta fix that problem. And we wanna make that easy. So if you've never been, been before live, Cornelia Christian Church, 
we will pay for your first night hotel stay here in Arlington, Texas, so you can be here live. I'm doing a matrix, okay? Ah, all that good stuff. We want you to be here live. Why am I doing this? For no reason whatsoever. But I do want you to be a part of our worship service. So sign up, uh, contact our office. We'll take your hotel stay. Be here live. We will be back next week.